speaking to? Is that you? <laughs> Where are you? I'm on the ear! Oh, me this good! Wait me again! You're the third angel? In the flesh! Oh, that's not quite right now, is it? Because technically I'm an angel, and angels aren't human beings, and therefore they don't have flesh, and therefore... Yes, 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 angel, angel, I, I get the point, but what happened to you? I... <laughs> See, Mr. Scrooge, I'm still working on re entrances and exits. I'm kind of new at this, you know. Oh, but don't you worry, I'll get it right yet. Why, I've always had that experience as the best teacher, anyway. And you're hoping to get your experience by escorting me? Well, I've got to get my experience somehow now, don't I? Besides, I've got big oh. plans for you, Mr. Scrooge. Or rather, he does. I was just so excited I was chosen for this assignment. It's my very first one, you know. <laughs> oh, your very first what? Assignment? Oh. Why, oh. I've never done this before. Oh. Say, Mr. Scrooge, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I'm having a wee bit of a problem with me entrances. Oh. I've noticed your wee bit of problem. Oh, oh, well, don't you worry. I'll get it right yet. I'm certain I can get us out of here and right back all in one piece. Least hope I can. <laughs> oh, Angel, where, pray tell, are you going to take me? Why, to Christmas yet to come. <laughs> Christmas yet to come. Exciting, isn't it? You, you mean the future? Why, yes, Mr. Scrooge. Oh, whatever, whatever shall we see there? Well, I suppose you'll see whatever he wants for you to see. Oh, whatever did I do to deserve this? <laughs> I fear I shall need a word from the Lord at this time. <laughs> oh, goody! That really is my favorite part anyway. Oh. Let's see here. Verily, verily, I say unto thee... Oh, 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 not that one, not that one. This one's really, really good. Try this one. Seek ye first... Oh, the wait, 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 but, but Mr. Scrooge, you got to try this one. This one is really, really good. Try that one. Yes. Jesus wins. Oh, but then I do have a favorite. <laughs> Angel, would you just please pick one? All right. Don't get your naughty in a twist. <sighs> yeah, read this one. This one? Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of Death! Oh, Angel, please tell me we will return safely. Put it here, Governor! <laughs> oh. I fear I shall become a praying man. Oh! Well, oh, oh. That's what we all been waiting for! Gloria! Gave me a heart attack there. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, what glorious name have they bestowed upon you? Oh, well, they call me Hope. Because uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I know this one. Yes, I do. Dear. Oh, I hope, I hope I shan't die from this whole experience. I wasn't trying to be. Well, all right. Are you ready? 
lead on. All right. This is different. Here we go! Angel, uh, wait, 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 wait. Shouldn't I be bringing my Bible? Oh, right! <laughs> Sometimes I forget that part. Excuse me. Go now. Here we go. Hey, Joe, we're still here. Oh. Oh dear. Didn't quite work. Now did it? <laughs> no, it didn't. Hey, we must try that one again. Say, Mr. Scrooge. Yes. Ready now! Always ready as I'll ever be. My very own town. Oh well, Mr. Scrooge, I suppose you shall have to discover that for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all the people who've assembled here, I would merely like to mention, if I may, that our unanimous attitude is one of lasting gratitude for what our friend has done for us today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
my business. I, I'm going to have him arrested, I will. Just watch Mr. Scrooge. Remember, he can't see you anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's the nicest thing in England. Oh, oh, they thought this is where we might find her. Yeah, sure didn't take you long to settle in now, did it? And why shouldn't it? It's my shop now. Lester the pawnbroker? He owns my business. Shh. Just listen, Mr. Scrooge. You're going to miss everything. Oh, so here's where you're meeting. I've been searching over half of London for you. <laughs> Ladies. 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 You're so noisy. You can wake the dead. Just so as we don't wake the old man, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we might have to give back all his valuable merchandise. Well, <laughs> there's no chance of that. He's dead in the door now. <laughs> all right, ladies, one at a time. Let's see what you brought me. Miss Fairgate, you first. Wait a minute, Liz. We was there first. Well, you'll get your turn. You'll get your turn. Now, point down. Why don't you see what I brought you? My, my. You did make a killing, now, didn't you? Aye. Hey, I got a right to look after myself. He always did. Didn't pay me nothing but a pittance when he was alive, so I took what I could get when he was dead. Besides, who's going to tell on me? The lot of you! <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Fairgate, can you tell us how he died? Yeah, was it very sad? Not in the least. He just lay there on his deathbed, all alone, gasping for his last breath. <gasps> Oh, <laughs> we suppose that's what the dog said, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies. We must be getting on with business. It serves him right anyway. Lucy, let me see what you brought Hold me. up, mate. You ain't paid me for my pile yet. Oh, me dear. How forgetful of me. <laughs> Here's your shilling. Is that all? Mrs. Fairgate. The body's hardly in the grave cold yet, and I have to hold on to these items for an indeterminate amount of time as is. Lucy, let me see what you brought me. <clears throat> Mighty fine they are. What is it? Why, these is bed linens, of course. <laughs> you don't mean to say. You took him off his bed with him still lying there dead, do you? And why not? It ain't like you be needing him where he's going. It's too blooming hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's your shoe. Wait a minute, Les. Me time's worth more than this. Come across with the rest of it. Lucy, you have an odd bargain. All right, all right, it's me turn now. Take a look at these fine clothes. Not all a threadbare place on them. What do you give me for them, Les? Just quite nice. 
She'll bring on some pies. You bet your life they will. And can you believe they was going to waste a minute? And I not stepped in on the sly, of course. Waste him? What do you mean, waste him? Why, they was going to plot the old geezer in it. But me being as quick as I am, I snatched that shirt right off his body. I couldn't bear to see such a fine shirt go six feet under. You took it right off the poor man's body. Don't look at me so. Ain't no one gonna mourn his burying, so who's gonna notice it's gone? He was a disease now, was he? He didn't have anything like catching now, did he? You don't think I'd have touched it if he had? <laughs> All right. Now that's more like it, Les. All right, ladies, that's enough for tonight. You're all done very well for yourselves. You best be on your way so no one's the wiser of our little meeting here tonight. Go on. Go on. Off with y'all. Okay, okay. Go on. Okay. Now maybe I can get some work done around here. Wait a minute. Where's me stuff? Mrs. Vargo! Oh, Angel, I don't wish to know the man of whom they speak. I understand the point you're trying to make, that, that greedy men may come to this fate, but tell me, surely someone must have cared for this poor soul? One could only wish for it to be so, Mr. Scrooge. This fate is so much more than I can bear. Tell me, Angel, were there... Surely there, there's a word from the Lord that help, tr help ease this troubled mind. I'm so sorry, Mr. Scrooge, but I'm afraid it is now too late for even that. Angel. Angel, where, where have you brought me? Uh, what, what, what is this? Uh, wait a minute. Who, who, who is who is buried there? Uh, Angel, do I, do I know him? May we may we step may we step closer? I must go no farther, Mr. Scrooge. You shall have to face the rest of this journey alone. Scrooge! No! It can't be! Angel, surely it can't! Oh no! It is I who lay beneath this grave! Oh God, what am I to do? Tell me, Lord, what am I to do? My, my Bible! Yes! Oh, my Bible. Where is it? I know it's in here somewhere. Where is that it? I know it's in here. Oh, yes, yes. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed in every one and into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out into the city of Nazareth, into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, those days where it were to be accomplished that sheep should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields 
and keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And that shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward all men and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into the heavens that the shepherds said to one another let us now go into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord hath made known to us and they came with haste and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying, lying in a manger. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? Oh, these memories have been so painful. Oh, so painful. But tell me, I, I, surely there, there is some place I can go to just start again. Oh God, what am I to do? Hear the heart of heaven beating, Jesus saves. Jesus saves and the hush of mercy breathing Jesus saves Jesus saves hear the host of angels sing glory to the newborn king and the sounding joy repeating Jesus saves. See the humblest hearts adore Him. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. And the wisest bow before Him. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. See the sky alive with praise melting darkness in its blaze there is light forevermore in Jesus saves he will live our sorrow sharing Jesus saves Jesus saves he will die burden bearing Jesus saves Jesus saves it is done we'll shout the cross Christ has paid redemption's cost while the empty tombs declaring Jesus saves 
Jesus. Some of your wives are elbowing you right now, husbands. You know the type of people that use the coffee grounds twice. You know them. Ebenezer Scrooge. And it's interesting that Dickens chose the name Ebenezer. It's a biblical name. It's a biblical name meaning rock of help. And that carries all through scripture that God is the rock of help. And Paul refers to Jesus as the rock. He is our rock. He is the rock of our salvation. See, Ebenezer Scrooge was confronted with three areas. His past, his present, and his future. In Hebrews it says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That the same Jesus that did miracles, the same Jesus that healed in biblical times is doing it today and will continue to do it forever. That is love. That is a God that loves us. A God that gives a gift of his son so that we can have eternal life. In the same way that Ebenezer was confronted with his past, his present, and his future is the same way it will be with all of us that one day we will stand before God and we will give an account for our past. But in this present time and tonight, it's not by accident that you are here. But in this present time, this right now, God wants to wipe away your past. It's what you do with Jesus Christ in this present time, at this very moment, that will give you a future, a future of hope. See, all of us have a uh, future, and that future is eternity. And there's two outcomes in eternity. There's eternity in heaven with God, and that's what Jesus died for. Jesus died that we can have eternity with God. Jesus died and was sacrificed so that our past would be wiped away and that we could be with God forever and ever and ever. That's why it's eternity. But it's what you do in this present with Jesus that will determine your eternity. Because the other part of that eternity, and a lot of us don't like to talk about it, is hell. See, hell wasn't created for man. Hell wasn't created for us. It was created for Satan and his demons. That that's where they would go. But it's because we reject God's love. We reject God's son. We reject that gift of eternal grace. That that's our outcome. But in this present time, you have that opportunity to let Jesus dictate your future. You have this time to let Jesus have your present life to wipe away your past. You have that time now. I think if Scrooge were to were sum it up, he would say this. What profits a man if he gains the whole world, but he loses his soul? 
Those were the exact words of Jesus. What profits you if you've gained the whole world? You have everything. You've got everything. But you lose your soul. James says our life is but a mist. Compared to eternity, a mist. What's your future? I'm going to ask you just to bow your head and I want to pray for you. Just all across this sanctuary. And if I can just have a little bit of light. I want to pray for you. And this is how I want to pray. I want to pray for those in this present time, at this very moment, want to let Jesus write their future. Want to let Jesus control their future. And if that's you and you would come to this point in your life where you say, I want to ask Jesus Christ into my life to be the forgiver of my sins and the leader of my life because it's our sins that separate us from God for eternity. But Jesus came to wipe away all those sins. That's a loving God. And I want to pray for you. And if you would say tonight, Pastor Tommy, right now in this present time, I'm going to give Jesus my past, my present, and my future to make him my Savior and my Lord. If that's you tonight, with nobody looking around, I want you to raise your hand because I'm going to pray for you. Raise your hand. You say, I want to make that commitment. Thank you. I see that lady. Thank you so much. That hand and that hand. You can put that hand down all across this sanctuary. And God sees. It doesn't matter. And it's not your hand, raising of your hand, that saved you. It's what Jesus did on the cross for you 2,000 years ago. It's not your works. It's Jesus' sacrifice. Anybody else? Your hand lifted up. Thank you. Thank you for those hands. Heavenly Father, I pray right now for those individuals that raised their hand. I don't know their names, but you know their names because you knitted them in their mother's womb. You knew them at their time of birth, their time of conception. You knew the plans and, and, and the future that you had for them. And at this present moment, they come to you, the rock of help, that Jesus, you will be their help in this time that Jesus, they will confess you as Lord and Savior and their future is now in your hands. Lord, I pray that they understand what you've done for them, that your death, Jesus, on the cross has wiped away their sins, that they're a new creation in Christ and their past is gone and their future is with you. That that resurrection, there is power. And that resurrection gives them new life that they can spend in eternity with you. Be so real to them tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you raised your hand tonight, this is what we want you to do. I'm going to be standing out in the foyer. I'm going to be standing out at the Welcome Center. I want you to stop by and say, Pastor Tommy, tonight was the night that I gave Jesus my present my past, and my future. I want you to tell me that. I want you to stop by and say, I have new life in Jesus Christ. I want you to stop by and let me know. So here's what happens now. We're going to go back and check and see where no longer the Scrooge, but Ebenezer is now. Watch this. It's morning. I'm alive. It's hallelujah. Joy to the world. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh you there, lad. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, well, you're one of Cratchit's children. Yes, sir. Oh, good. Tell me what's your name. Victor, sir. Oh, Victor, my boy. What day is this? Why, it's Christmas Day, sir. Oh, good. I haven't missed it. Um... No, sir. Oh, yes. Is that large turkey uh, still hanging in the poultry man shop? You know, the, the prize winning one? 
Yes, sir. I saw it there with my own eyes. Oh, good. Well, if you just rush right over there and have it sent to your home, <laughs> there is a shiny new shilling in it for you. Yes, sir. I'll go right away, sir. Oh, good and a Merry Christmas to you. And Merry Christmas to you, sir. Oh, what a wonderful day. <laughs> uh, is anyone seeing Mrs. Fairgate? Oh, Mrs. Fairgate, where are you? Uh, oh, Mrs. Fairgate, I see you come over here, please. I've been searching all over half of London for you. Oh, dear me, sir. Yes, you. Uh, I need to speak with you. Uh, about your wages. Oh dear. How much do I pay you as my housekeeper? Tis only one shilling per week, sir. One shilling? Oh. Well, tis fourth raised to ten. Oh. And Merry Christmas to you. Oh, Excuse me, Uncle. Are you quite all right? Oh, Bob, my boy. Merry Christmas to you and, and to you, ma'am, and to you, and to you, and to you, and to you, and uh, oh, this little lad right here. You must be Tiny Tim. Yes, sir, I am. Oh. Are, you, are you the real Mr. Scrooge? That I am, my boy. You'll never guess who I met last night. All of you, you'll never guess. Who? Oh, tell, tell us. Tiny Tim, do you remember that, that picture you drew me? The one with Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus? Yes, sir. Oh, it's the most momentous work of all that I've ever seen. I'm going to frame it, I am. And then I'm going to place it right over the mantel. Uncle, Uncle, please. Can I see you, Matt? Yeah. yeah. I met Jesus last night. <gasps> Right here in this very spot, uh, uh, this very spot, it, it has changed my life forever. He has changed my life forever. Oh, Bob, could you ever forgive an old fool for, for making your life so utterly miserable? Well, sir, I don't know what to say. And you, Tiny Tim, oh, how would you like to be running and, and playing with all the other children. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, you know, it's I, not possible, Uncle. Well, how about leaping and dancing? Yes, yes. I'm going to see to it personally that you have the operation that you so desperately need. Uh, and then you're going to be running and, and playing and leaping and dancing all around. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you, Uncle. Oh. Jesus. Thank you. Oh, oh, my boy. We don't know what to say, Uncle. And Bob, about your wages. Yes, sir. About your wages. How much do I pay you? Well, sir, it's... Uh... Ah, it doesn't matter. Tis forth with... Don't. No, tripled. Isn't the love of God absolutely amazing? Well, hallelujah.
program. God bless you. Have a good night and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.